Hi everyone, thank you for coming to today's webinar. Today we'll be taking you through some of the most interesting findings from our GWI USA data set that focuses on all the important things you need to know about Gen Z. We have a lot of great information to share with you today about this up and coming generation and how there are some really exciting ways to engage with this consumer. If anyone has any questions throughout the session, please feel free to write them in the chat and we'll be sure to collect them at the end of today's webinar and follow up with you via email. So my name is Laura and I lead the US Trends team here at GWI. And I'm also joined today by one of our brilliant trend analysts from our London office, Steph. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in today. So it really wouldn't be a webinar about Gen Z if we didn't talk about all the ways this digitally savvy consumer connects and creates at a digital level. So we're also joined today by our wonderful guest speaker, Irene from Imager. Hi everyone, thanks so much for having me. Excited to be here today. And Image has really been paving the way for, you know, a platform that really provides a lot of endless uh, streaming and bite-sized fun through memes and visual stories. And um, Irene is going to talk to us about our co-branded GWI uh, custom study in Q2 2021. And we're really excited to have Irene join us today to talk a little bit more about that later. So we've got lots to cover. So before we move on to the research, we're going to give you a quick overview of who we are. So for anyone who's unfamiliar, we're a target audience company who provide consumer insights to leading brands, marketing agencies and media organisations worldwide. We're also home to the world's largest survey on the digital consumer. We make our global data available through our intuitive subscription based platform, which allows teams to dive in and cross analyse different data points and audiences to better understand consumers. In the US, we cover all 50 states and we have 210 designated market areas. Our USA survey has a quarterly sample of 20,000 or 80,000 annually, which roughly equates to 240 million connected consumers. So what this means is that we're really able to tap into the US consumer across a really wide range of demographic backgrounds. And our USA survey is filled with a really broad range of categories. So not only do we get to ask questions about attitudes and interests, but we can also dive deeper into consumer needs across multiple industries. Our questionnaire content is tailored to the American market while the sample encompasses a really broader range of internet users by age. And our survey also contains a set of multicultural questions shown to only Hispanic, Black, African-American and Asian-American respondents. So now that you know a little bit about us, let us tell you a little bit more about who Gen Z are. So Gen Z makes up 16% of the population in the US. And one thing that's really important to consider when we look at Gen Z is that they are really varied life stages. Gen Z's age ranges from 16 to 24. And I don't know about yourselves, but my opinions, desires and behaviors were enormously different at 16 compared to 24. So when we look at this generation, we need to remember that some are still very much in school, while others are beginning their lives outside of their parents' homes, some are leaving college, and others are joining the workforce. And as Gen Z are at such varied stages of life, as they get older and join the workforce, we can only expect the estimated 140 billion that they have in spending power to grow. This generation will be interacting with some industries for the very first time, such as auto and finance. So brands can really find themselves at a key point of discovery for many of these consumers. And not only are Gen Z at really varied life stages, but they're also the most diverse generation we've seen yet. One in five describe themselves as LGBTQIA+. This is the highest rate compared to other generations, and they're really proud of their identities, and they want to connect with their values. So let's break this consumer down even further. So it hasn't been easy for Gen Z. Compared to previous generations, 
the weight of the world is really on their shoulders. And these young consumers have found themselves at the forefront of an ever increasing urgency of sustainability. Of the 21 concerns Gen Zs have, climate change is top of their list with 44% feeling worried. And they're actually 14% more likely than millennials to say this. So there's this really unwavering concern for climate change. And you can see that here over time. Concern over infectious viruses like COVID and concerns for gun violence have declined with climate change continuing to be their number one worry. And what this means is that this generation's concern for the climate emergency has led to a consumer group that demands more transparency about production and the supply chain, and they're placing much more demand on governments to take action. So it's likely to influence not only how they shop, but also the types of careers that they consider too. So as Gen Z get older, another area of concern for this young consumer is with their health. 36% are worried about the cost and quality of healthcare. Unsurprisingly, Gen Z often find themselves looking to online resources when they research or try to diagnose their symptoms rather than visit a doctor or a healthcare professional. And if anyone here has been scrolling for too long on social media, you might have noticed an influx of doctors and medical professionals taking to online platforms, especially on TikTok, to spread awareness and education on a really wide range of medical topics. So for those within the health and wellness industry, the eldest of Gen Z, who is just two years away from leaving their insurance plans from their parents, there's really an opportunity to really try to resonate with their concerns and understand how they discover information before Gen Z actually steps into this market. So with all of these shifts in attitudes, concerns and worries on their minds, one thing that's really prominent with this generation is that they're actually far, far more likely to prioritize mental health. So exactly that, Gen Z are putting mental health on the map. Now this generation experiencing really different challenges compared to previous generations, with many of these being brought to the fore by the pandemic. Now, not only have Gen Z been hit harder in terms of job losses and disruptions to their education, but they're also more likely to be feeling the impact of isolation, which is associated with working from home. And this has led to many feeling that their mental health, which was already a key issue, has worsened since the pandemic started. And we can see the impact of the pandemic in our research. 28% of Gen Z say they experience stress often or regularly, which is up from 22% in Q2 2020. Feelings of anxiety have also increased 14% during the same time frame, with 42% of Gen Z saying they experienced anxiety in 2021. Something which is also notable about Gen Z is that while they struggle with anxiety the most out of any generation, they're also less likely than everyone else to say that they feel comfortable talking about their mental health. And even though we've seen an increase in Gen Z saying it's okay for people to say when they're struggling, they are still less likely than other generations to say this. But this doesn't take away from the fact that the majority of Gen Z want people to be more open about their mental health. It just suggests that they need a bit more encouragement to get the support that they need to start opening up. So even though Gen Z are a more concerned and anxious generation, they're really ready to hustle. Making money is important to 54% of this generation, and this drive for money and success has led to half of Gen Z in the US taking on some form of gig economy work in the last year. And we can link this to how Gen Z describe themselves. Compared to other generations, Gen Z over-index in personality traits that describe themselves as rebellious, daring, and persuasive. And these attributes lend themselves to a much more money-driven and financially focused lifestyle. With Gen Z having an adventurous streak, they have also become a generation of investors, with the number investing in cryptocurrency increasing by 200% since Q2 2020. 
And something which has made making money and being successful even more important to this generation is the pandemic. They're a generation that see themselves as being driven and ambitious. And as job losses hit Gen Z harder than other generations, they've really grown to value the importance of financial security. And the number who say that it's one of their top aspirations has grown by 5% since Q2 2020. So with all of these worries, concerns and anxieties that fuel this young consumer, we're seeing a deeper connection to nostalgia. 14% of Gen Z would rather think about the past than the future. Now, 14% isn't the biggest of numbers, but it's much higher in comparison to other generations. With COVID-induced uncertainties still lingering and their anxiety creeping up, they're really finding comfort in returning to the familiar. I'm sure many of you have seen Gen Z bringing the late 90s and early 2000s back, especially in current fashion and beauty trends with low rise jeans, choker necklaces and skinny eyebrows all coming back by popular demand, all from this younger consumer. And with their attention to design focused on a Y2K aesthetic, they're also deepening their love for escapism in media too. Gen Z consumers in the US have been ahead of the game when it comes to streaming services compared to Gen Z consumers in the rest of the world. TV is a really big part of Gen Z culture in the US, but streaming is king. So those within the media space, they should really bear this in mind that not only do their TV commercials need to be aimed at Gen Z, they can also really benefit from cross-pollinating advertisements into the streaming space. And in terms of the types of content they're watching, their top genre is comedy, but the most distinctive genres they're watching are anime and animation. This is again another nod to nostalgia, and it also shows their growing interest in foreign TV and films, with the number watching either dubbed or subtitled foreign content having grown by 31% in the last year. So next up, we're going to talk about Gen Z's relationship with social media and touch on how brands can connect with, the gen with this generation online. So if we look at the main platforms that Gen Z use on social media, Instagram comes out number one. However, interest in TikTok is growing quickly and it's now Gen Z's third most popular social media platform. In our data compared to other social media sites, TikTok is the only platform to have seen growth between Q4 2020 to 2021, increasing 11% that year. So there's a big possible reason for this. Gen Z's favorite content is funny or lighthearted in nature. And TikTok content is often associated with being more authentic compared to Instagram, which is now seen as being quite aspirational. So we're gonna delve in a little deeper on why authenticity matters so much to Gen Z. So for a start, Gen Z in the US are 27% more likely to feel that using social media causes anxiety compared to Gen Z in the rest of the world. So they're wanting to create a more honest and healthy online environment. So we looked at this a bit further in our Connecting the Dots report, and we found that Gen Z are more likely than other age groups to feel there's too much pressure to be perfect on social media and that people should show their real selves online more. And in the US in particular, the number of Gen Z who, who agree that they want their lifestyle to impress others has dropped 17% since Q2 2020. And influencers have come under fire in the last few years for a number of reasons, but to Gen Z, they're becoming too aspirational and there's calls for more relatable content from them. In the US, Gen Z's interest in influencers has fallen 15% since Q2 2020, while the number who follow influencers in the rest of the world has actually grown 4% since Q1 2021. So it's a pretty significant drop in interest in the US in particular, and it's led to the rise in popularity of a movement now referred to as Genu Influencers, which is a combination of the word genuine and influencer. Uh, these are people who kind of aim to share advice and information online rather than sell products, for example, and they're more likely to be popular among Gen Z in the US compared to the rest of the world. So to talk to us a little bit more about how Gen Z are really creating an authentic, creative narrative online, I'll pass over to our guest speaker from Imager, Irene. Thanks, Laura. 
Um, yeah, so in our study, which we called um, Going Viral, a look under the hood of the internet, we found that 68% of Gen Zs said they were using and sharing memes and GIFs to make them feel more connected, compared to 63% of millennials and 60% of Gen X. And I think, you know, we attribute this to not only Gen Zs being digital natives, but also growing up essentially using the language of the internet from the start. So memes, GIFs, and videos, these visual mediums are, are really the cornerstone of how people communicate, um, even in their personal direct messages. There's quick snippets of content that don't look overproduced, but hold a lot of meaning, whether that's, you know, something funny or something serious, they immediately evoke some type of emotion. And there's often this collective feeling and relatability associated with them. And I think in that in of itself, you know, really appeals to Gen Z. They have a desire for more genuine content and connection. And to Stephanie's point earlier, they truly value authenticity over aspiration, um, which leads me to my next slide. So more and more of Gen Z say they think it's okay for people to say when they're struggling. And here you see the top line has been steadily increasing from 57% to 60% since 2020. Um, and we mentioned this earlier in the context of health and wellness, but it applies in the social and community spaces too. Gen Z's in our survey also said they were less interested in trying to impress others and less influenced by what's cool or trendy. Um, and I was really surprised to see this downward trend myself, but if we move to the next slide even, we see that, you know, see that a little bit further in their online habits. Um, Gen Z's are turning away from curation, particularly in using filters or effects on social media platforms. And we see this number going down from 50% in 2020 to 50% in 2021. Um, our data also shows that Gen Z's are increasingly spending their time on platforms that encourage authenticity and even anonymity in places like Imgur and Reddit or Discord. Um, and I think all in all, we're learning that keeping it real and sharing our true selves is important, especially to this generation. Um, the expectation too is that brands will do the same when they show up in these social spaces. The audience you know, can automatically tell when a brand is trying too hard to fit in. So, it's imperative to evaluate the partners and platforms and the content you're producing through that lens. You know, is this true to our brand voice and our personality? Am I bringing value to the audience? And am I appearing in places where this authenticity can thrive? Um, you know, personally, I think it's really exciting to see Gen Z paving the way for everyone to come to the table as their whole selves. Um, I think that's something that we certainly all can strive for in our lives, both IRL and URL. Um, and with that, I'll, I'll pass it on to Laura. Thanks, Irene. Some really insightful in info there on just how Gen Z are really connecting at, at a much deeper level. Um, so now that we know and understand our Gen Z consumer a little bit better, how do brands engage with Gen Z and what exactly do they want? So when taking brand attitudes or brand attributes into consideration, Gen Z are really interested in brands that create stronger consumer connections and experiences. If you look at the chart to the left where we ask, what does this consumer want brands to be? Gen Z over index in needing brands to be bold. But what makes a brand bold? Well, for Gen Z, it needs to align with their similar views on media content. Brands that harness humorous and authentic experiences are really likely to hook this consumer in. And if you look to the chart on the right, where we ask, what does this consumer want brands to do? This generation also really stands out and over indexes on wanting brands to run customer communities and forums. Gen Z wants to be involved. And this is a really great way for brands to tap into real and honest feedback. Brands should be careful though, because while Gen Z likes to be involved with user-generated content, Campaigns that rely heavily on viral stars and digital creators need to make sure that they're creating spaces that don't potentially look as though they're using these younger consumers for free labor. As we know, Gen Z are keen to succeed and make money. So they're, they're kind of unlikely to commit to a brand that doesn't offer them opportunities to do this. 
Gen Z spends a lot of time online and while they're really comfortable with digital experiences, 46% of them still prefer coming in store. So it's super important for brands to combine this digitally native generation with a seamless in real life experience. Not only are Gen Z interested in product demonstrations or free gifts, contactless shopping experiences and limited interaction with staff are what will really get Gen Z going through the doors. So if we look at online needs, Gen Z value personalised recommendations. Now, Sephora is a really good example of this. They've brought in a 3D augmented reality mirror, which helps shoppers virtually try and make up using their app. Now, individual tailoring like this can really build a brand's connection with Gen Z. It's also, also worth noting that this generation is so invested in their concerns around climate change that they're also making eco-conscious decisions when buying online, and they're more likely to opt for an eco-friendly delivery service when considering their purchases. So now that we've taken you through who Gen Z are, their Concerns, future outlooks and how to really engage with this consumer. Last up, we have our top key messages that you should really take away from today's webinar. So brands really need to adapt ways to engage with the concerns that Gen Z has. Environmental worries are really likely to underpin decisions Gen Z makes with their life, including how they shop, where they work and what career path they pursue. And with all of the concerns that Gen Z has, this generation has become acutely in tune with their mental health. So brands that provide safe spaces for this consumer to not only open up, but give them the tools they need to succeed in tackling their anxieties are paramount. Now, G uh, Gen Z are an ambitious group. They've got their sights set on securing a better future for themselves. So brands can look at creating environments where these crypto investing consumers can spend, invest and save their money, all while creating working environments for them that allow them to thrive across multiple industries and platforms. Now, a key behavioural change in Gen Z is that they're really looking back to go forward. So brands can look at investing in an aesthetic that not only encompasses a nostalgic presence, but one that links them back to a pre-pandemic norm. And our last and final takeaway for you all today is to keep it real when it comes to social media. Across our extensive research, the interest in influencers is starting to decline. Gen Z seek a more honest and healthier online environment. And if brands really want to attract this young consumer, a more authentic and creative environment is the way to go. So that wraps up our jam-packed webinar about Gen Z. This consumer is such an enormous topic that we condensed down a lot of information for you all today in a very short space of time. So we'll be sending you the recording and slides from this webinar so you can dig into it um, more in your own time. And another big thank you to Irene from Imager for joining us today. Thank you, thanks so much. And if anyone has any questions about Gen Z or you'd like more information about what we do here at GWI, please feel free to reach out to our team emails, which are on screen now. Thanks, everyone.